Pride and Prejudice is Jane Austen's most well-known and most beloved novel. It's been made into films countless amounts of times. I mean, beyond the four or five more less original films that stick closely to the plot and time period. But today, I'm just talking about the four most well-known, most original films based on Jane Austen's book. And I have read the book, so I am going to be talking about which one I feel like is the closest to the book, or which ones are the closest to the book, one by one, and which ones are the best in my opinion. And it's just my opinion. You are entitled to your own, and if you don't agree with me, comment below and tell me why. Today I'm going to be reviewing and comparing four of the most well-known Pride and Prejudice adaptations. 1940, 1980, 1995, and 2000. However, there is a 1967 version. It is black and white, and it I think it is a miniseries. I tried to watch this, but I couldn't find the entire thing, so I'm not going to be going over that one, but I feel like it's not as well known as these four others, so I was just going to leave this that one out of this review. So, number four, my least favorite Pride and Prejudice, and the one that I feel is the least like the book is Pride and Prejudice 1940 and I have some serious reasons for this. First reason being that it is only an hour and 58 minutes and if you've seen my Emma review and comparison video you know that I can't stand short adaptations of period dramas Especially if the original story had so much in it that was so good. That's not even the worst thing, though. Um, other problems with this adaptation was the costumes. If you've ever seen this, you know that it doesn't look like Victorian England. It looks like during sometime during the Civil War. There is a reason for this, and it was because of the recent success of Gone with the Wind. They thought if they implemented the same style of costumes that it would be just as popular. Obviously, it was not. Another reason I did not like this adaptation was because the plot was different from the original story of Pride and Prejudice, and this really bugged me because I like the, the plot of Pride and Prejudice. Um, for instance, Lady Catherine de Bourgh at the very end, she does have a con confrontation with Elizabeth, but she literally goes back outside to her carriage and Mr. Darcy is waiting for her and, and Lady Catherine de Bourgh speaks, speaks as though she approves of Elizabeth. And while I'm sure that all Pride and Prejudice fans want the movie to end with Lady Catherine de Bourgh approving of Mr. Darcy's choice in a bride, that didn't happen in this adaptation. And while it's I guess nice maybe to some people. Um, this does not happen in the book and life is not like that. It was very much a Hollywood type movie. But I cannot fault it too much for its lack of original plot because in the credits it literally, in the, in the opening credits, it literally says something like based on a book adaptation of Jane Austen's book. So I came a little bit of a longer way than just straight from Jane Austen's work. While these are some great problems with this movie, the one thing that I did not like the most of any of them was Mr. Darcy. And I'm sure everyone can agree that Mr. Darcy is what makes Pride and Prejudice. And while Lawrence Olivier did a good job in Rebecca, he did not do a good job as Mr. Darcy. He was not the proud, arrogant, conceited, whatever type of guy, you know, that you imagine Mr. Darcy being. Number three, I do not own this um, in a physical VHS or DVD uh, case, but I have seen it online, and it is Pride and Prejudice 1980. This version doesn't have a lot of cons. I would say the greatest one being that it was just very old and poor quality, and when you watch it, you feel like you're watching a play, like on a stage, kind of like um, the 1971 Emma. I heard somewhere that this version is almost more like a feminist version, meaning that it capitalizes more on the progression of the female characters and not quite so much on all the characters. 
when I watched it, I liked it um, for reasons like um, it was a good length, you know, I, it was a miniseries and I love miniseries. Um, however, it was odd. Mr. Darcy, I, I did actually like um, because he was very proud and very arrogant, although he did not do quite as good as I would say as um, future Mr. Darcy's did, um, he still, I think, did better than Laurence Olivier. Now, because it's such a good length and it's got more, um, time for more of the original plot, unlike 1940, um, it almost kind of ties in with Pride and Prejudice number two. Here's where I lose all of my friends. Pride and Prejudice, the second best Pride and Prejudice adaptation, in my opinion, is Pride and Prejudice 2005. And <laughs> just about every single one of my friends love this more than any other movie they've ever seen. Number one, um, this is about two hours, I think, in running time. And as you know, I cannot stand short Period dramas. Um, everything happened so fast. If you see a miniseries of Pride and Prejudice and then you watch this, everything happens so fast. It's like a heart attack and I am not joking. I would say this one almost ties with 1980 because 1980 was longer, but you have to credit this one with the fact that it is prettier, more professional. Here's another reason my friends will probably hate me. Um, Mr. Darcy. While I really liked him in Little Dorrit as Arthur Clennam, I really don't like him as Mr. Darcy. Mr. Darcy is a proud man. He is prideful. And I do not see that in Matthew, however you pronounce his last name. Um, this Mr. Darcy was more, in my words, beat down. He looked more humbled than anything. The biggest problem I have with this movie is the fact that it is sensationalized. And let me explain what I mean. So, as was my assumption in my Emma comparison and review video, the newest w is always made to be more of a romance, more mushy, more whatever you want to call it. Um, sensationalized. When you take a look at the proposal scene in the rain, the almost kiss in that scene, those are not original to Austin's work. It was made, they, they added to Austin's work and you're left there like, you know, it's a great romance, but it's no longer Jane Austen's work. They even added new dialogue and new quotes to the story. Like, you have bewitched me, body and soul. That's not original to Jane Austen. That is an original to this movie. Of course, if Jane Austen had thought about it, she may have put it in there. When I talk about sensationalized, I'm talking about the fact that things have been removed from the original story of Pride and Prejudice to make this movie. Things have been added to make it somebody else's work. And yeah, that's what they're doing. They're making a movie to sell, to get viewers, to, get, to make money. Jane Austen's book was not about money. I honestly think, if you take a look at the Bennett family, how poor they were and how all the daughters were being relied upon to marry somebody wealthy, that was Jane Austen's situation and she never married. She, for whatever reason, um, and I think she wrote Pride and Prejudice as a rebellion against the social standings of the time. She was sick and tired of the fact that you couldn't get a wealthy husband because of your family situation. She was probably really frustrated about it. She was probably tired of being so heavily relied upon and then probably feeling like she had failed when she never ended up getting married. She was tired of being a burden to her family that she had to rely upon them to support her because she had very little success with her books in her time and so she wrote a book about it she wrote a book letting out all her frustration she wrote a book about a wealthy wealthy man who would be the type of man she probably wished that she had ended up marrying in her lifetime and he fell so desperately in love with a girl just like her it just would be like a miracle back then. It's not just a romance. It's so much closer to real life than people even realize. Jane Austen saw something that she didn't like and she wrote about it. She wrote against it. I'll do better than that. 
I'll write it. And who knows, maybe because of Pride and Prejudice, things are the way they are today. Maybe she did make a difference, as I'm sure was her purpose in writing this book. I think I'm more of a romantic than most other people. This movie is just another romance to me. It's not really even what Pride and Prejudice is so much about. I mean, it still has the basic plot, but it doesn't really focus on all that. It's been added to and taken away from until it's almost just another romance. Which is why Pride and Prejudice, number one, in my opinion, is Pride and Prejudice 1995. And I have serious reasons for this too. It's a mini-series, number one. So you've got a lot of time to include everything. It's also most by the book than any other adaptation I've ever seen. Um, I have, in fact, read the book. I have it right here. And while I was reading it, although it's been a couple years ago, I remember comparing it to this series. And while not everything in the book was in this series, um, it was still the closest thing I had ever seen. Colin Firth did the part of Mr. Darcy with flying colors and curly hair. He does an outstanding job as Mr. Darcy. I have never seen somebody do such a great job. I mean, he's proud, he's arrogant, and if you've ever seen the proposal scene, I have watched all four proposal scenes, and that the first line about, I have struggled in vain, it will not do, I can't remember the exact quote, is a tough one. That is the toughest line of the proposal, and he nailed it. When Colin Firth proposes. In vain I have struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. In declaring myself thus, I am fully aware that I will be going expressly against the wishes of my family, my friends, and I hardly need add my own better judgment. The relative situation of our families is such that any alliance between us must be regarded as a highly reprehensible connection. Indeed, as a rational man, I cannot but regard it as such myself, but it cannot be helped. Almost from the earliest moments of our acquaintance, I have come to feel for you a passionate admiration and regard which, despite all my struggles, has overcome every rational objection, and I beg you, most fervently to relieve my suffering and consent to be my wife. The answer is yes! Also, even though it was made in 1995, the quality was really, really good, really great. Um, it's like you were watching a movie and it's not really bad quality either. Also, something that I find really interesting about this adaptation is Mr. Darcy, or the actor who played Mr. Darcy, and the actress who played Elizabeth Bennet actually dated after the show ended. <sighs> you just can't fake that kind of chemistry. I hope you have enjoyed my opinion, and I hope this video helped you to realize what Pride and Prejudice is really about, and open your eyes a little bit to Jane Austen's life and who she really was. Please subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this, and comment below if you would like me to review or compare any other of Jane Austen's works or any other period dramas you may know of. I would love suggestions. Thanks for watching.